Okay, let's set the scene here. Where are we? We're on the outskirts of that cute little town about 40 miles north of Santa Cruz, California on the central coast of California here, Pescadero. We're at a farm, a righteous farm, 78, 70 to 80 acres in Toto. Uh, Fifth Crow Farm, lots of veg crops, lots of flowers, and we're in the middle of their uh, apple pear orchard. They have about seven to 800 trees and they're planting more every year. And so that's where we are. What time is it? I don't know, about quarter past 10. But that more importantly, it's bloom time. It's pollen season. It's let's go forward. What kind of crop we're gonna have this year? Hopefully a good one. Okay, so it's pollination season. Let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, let's talk apples and pears, uh, as opposed to apricots, peaches, and nectarines. Uh, apricots, peaches, and nectarines are self-fertile. They don't need cross-pollination. They can accept the pollen from the flowers on the tree itself. They don't need a, a pollen from another variety, as do apples and pears. Apples and pears are cross-pollinated. You need pollen from a different variety. Say your pear is seckel. You need uh, pollen from a bosque or a comice pear to achieve pollination, fertilization, and fruit set. Fruit, the object of our desires, eh? And so, uh, you will need to account for the cross-pollination needs of, a, in this case, apples and pears. And that is simple in a sense. You just need other varieties, another variety. And one way you can get at it, and it's pretty easy on a farm scale, and it serves multiple purposes, which is plant a variety of varieties. This serves the purpose of having different types of apples, sweet, uh, tart, Good for eating, good for juicing, good for making a pie, uh, and also for extending your harvest window from early to middle to late, late, later still. Um, so usually, say an operation like this, they have about 12, 15 varieties of apples. They have six or eight varieties of pears. You're covered. If you just have a few trees or one tree, you need to make sure you have pollen from another variety of another variety of apple, another variety of pear that blooms at the same time. That's kind of the setting for pollination and fruit set. And then what else do you need? You need agents, air quotes, agents of pollination. Winged insects, principally and usually the European honeybee, Apis mellifera, but also in addition to that, there are many native pollinators, uh, various species of bumblebees, mason bees, sweat bees, uh, leaf cutter bees, taconid flies, a type of fly that pollinates fruit trees, uh, and also some non-stinging predatory wasps. So you have a whole host of characters to help you with your pollination. Some are managed, as in the honeybee, uh, most orchards don't keep their own bees. They're so busy doing so many other things, they just don't have the time that it entails. So they contract out with local beekeepers to bring in hives during the bloom period and get the job done. Um, but you could choose to have your own, own bees. Uh, in that uh, regard, you're also gonna get, in addition to pollination and fruit set, honey. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, and the general prescription for fruit trees is one to two robust beehives per acre. Let's say a robust beehive would contain 30 to 60,000 bees. Uh, and that's just the general rule. More is better. Um, uh, let's jump to pears. Behind me is a beautiful blooming pear. High to bloom right now. Uh, and I look and I sidle up to it and I say, what a lovely sight, ha, ah. ah. Okay, let's unpack that. Uh, pear blossoms are beautiful, but they stink to high heaven. They smell putrid, they smell like, well, rotting meat. Apple blossoms, on the other hand, so sweet like that. So what's the deal? Usually the prescription with 
honeybee hives is if you have one to two per acre for apples, you have two to four uh, for uh, uh, pears because the nectar is not as attractive to bees. But beyond that, what I have found, this is somewhat uh, experience-based. Uh, I've never read anything research-based about it, but I've found it to be true, is that pears, yeah, they're pollinated by the European honeybee, but more so they're pollinated by uh, things called taconid or taconid flies, bristly flies that are drawn to the putrid rotten meat smell of the blooms, thinking it's rotten meat and get the job done. They're also pollinated by these really little flitting things called uh, parasitic wasps. And the best time to see them is on a warm day, four o'clock in the afternoon, and they love white flowers, whether they're ornamentals or in this case, the pear, they're drawn to it. You see them flitting about and they are effective pollinators.